Okay, we're continuing with the top 50 health books of all time. In this video, we're going to cover uh, books number 31 through 35. We do five books each time. Okay, so the first book is going to be Toxic Legacy. And this book is written by Stephanie Seneth. She's a very smart lady. She has a PhD from MIT. She's a professor over there as well. And she became interested in glyphosate. And you can pronounce it glyphosate. That's the, actually the proper way to pronounce it. I like to pronounce it glyphosate because there's a phosphate attached to a glycine. Glycine is an amino acid. Glycine is the smallest amino acid. Its side group is only a hydrogen. The small side group of glycine enables it to fit very conveniently into enzyme active sites. Also, collagen has a triple helix very tightly wrapped. So having a small side group on the amino acid makes it easier to tightly wrap uh, a triple helix type of protein. So every third residue in glycine, I'm sorry, in collagen is a, is a glycine. And the thought is that glyphosate is substituting for glycines and proteins. So it's often disrupting enzyme active sites because that's a common location for glycines in a protein. And it's thought that it's also disrupting collagen ligaments. That's another reason why I would never eat this stuff because I see spines every day all messed up. And it appears that this is likely one of the mechanisms. The main mechanism, I think, is atherosclerosis and ischemia, uh, lack, of, lack of oxygen and glucose delivery to the discs of the spine. But uh, GP, I call this GP, I think that's a major contributor. She also, the reason she became interested in it because she thought that it, it was a major contributor to causing autism in children because the increase in autism parallels the increase in GP in the food supply. Uh, she noted that it originally was uh, used as an antimicrobial, and so it has a damaging effect on gut flora, and this predisposes to increased risk of leaky gut, increased intestinal permeability, and there's a whole series of diseases, the autoimmune diseases associated with that, celiac disease, um, celiac sensitivity, all those conditions. GP is also associated with fatty liver, which means it's associated with diabetes. In the brain, it functions as an excitotoxin. If you look at the brain receptor for glutamate, the NMDA receptor is coincident, meaning that it simultaneously binds glutamate along the time when it binds, it binds glycine and glutamate simultaneously. Okay, so anyways, um, glyphosate is thought to increase the activity of the NMDA receptor for letting uh, calcium into neurons, so it's an excitotoxin. It overstimulates neurons. So anyways, this is a very good book. It's kind of a difficult book. Uh, she goes through a lot of biochemistry. My recommendation, if you want to see what she has to say, is watch her videos. And she also has a website uh, where she has all her slides. So if you watch her videos and you look at the slides, it'll, it'll all make sense pretty simply. And the bottom line is glypho glyphosate is glycine phosphate. There's a little more to it than that, but that's basically what it is. And once you get that glycine uh, can be substituted out by glyphosate, you can understand how it messes up so many proteins and causes so many extensive uh, damaging problems to human health. Okay, the next book is uh, Mercury. Um, this one is by Jane Hightower, MD. She's an internist in the San Francisco Bay Area. And what happened is there were a whole bunch of sort of early middle age yuppies that were becoming demented and nobody knew what to do with them. Nobody knew how to properly test for mercury and so they weren't able to diagnose it. And you got all these demented yuppies and they started getting referred to her and she figured out how to test for mercury and um, she then just made them stop eating fish. The main reason most of these yuppies were getting demented was because they were eating too much fish. Like a bunch of chumps, they had believed all the nonsense by the phony so-called experts on the internet and the phony, uh, you know, newspapers, etc. that tell them, oh, eating fish is good for you. Fish is not good for you. I'm telling you guys, I studied all this stuff backwards and forwards. McDougall tells you the truth about nutrition. Fish is for chumps. It's loaded with mercury, not to mention all the fat, not to mention it's super um, acidic, not to mention the estrogen toxins and the other toxins in it. So anyways, the most important thing she said was that they should stop eating fish. And she described the dementia induced by eating fish. She called it fish fog. And the reason is it has a lot of mercury in it, much more than you would realize. Um, she talks about other sources of mercury and other things. She goes into a whole bunch of stuff. But the, the bottom line was this. Once you read this book, you'll never want to have a bite of fish again. Okay, the next book is Unsafe at Any Meal. This is book number 33 in our list of the top 50 nutrition and health books of all time. This was written by this lady, uh, Renee Joy Dufault. She's a PhD, 
And um, she figured out a whole bunch of stuff about food toxicology, but her biggest discovery was the recognition of how much mercury is present in high fructose corn syrup. And here's one of the papers that she wrote. Mercury from chloralkali plants, measured concentrations in food product sugar. Industry loves mercury. They would advertise high fructose corn syrup as a preservative, but they wouldn't tell you. The reason it's a preservative is because it's got mercury in it, okay? And part of the process of producing high fructose corn syrup where it's pushed through a chloralkali vat would put mercury into it. And I had a friend who was a molecular biologist, and he told me about a friend of his who did research that proved there was a lot of mercury in high fructose corn syrup. And when his friend published the paper, they immediately fired the guy. And that's the point I make. When you do something good in the nutrition and health business <clears throat> that usually gets you in trouble, gets a bunch of people pissed off at you, gets your funding cut, and often gets you fired. So it's really sad, but the truth of the matter is the big players who run the companies they don't want the public knowing the truth, okay? Because the public knowing the truth is bad for their business. And she was also talking about how the chloralkali plants, you know, use tons and tons of mercury, okay? Uh, like in one year, 8,000 pounds of it, okay? And every year there's all this unaccounted for lost mercury. Yeah, it's lost because it's going into the food. And not only does it cause brain damage, it's toxic in multiple ways, okay? So anyways, this is a good book, number 33 by Rene Dufault, Unsafe at Any Meal, about food toxicity, especially great information on mercury being a common contaminant of high fructose corn syrup. Okay, now we're gonna talk about a couple books on F minus. The first one is by Dean Murphy. He is a dentist. And this is the best book on F minus. If you only read one book on F minus, I would say read this one because he goes through the mechanisms of it. He goes through a wide variety of papers, how it causes brain damage, how it damages teeth. Uh, some people say it helps teeth, and it does seem to have a small protective effect on cavities, but pretty minuscule, how it increases cancer risk, and it causes a whole bunch of other health problems. And he goes through tons of papers. Okay, now this one I thought was interesting, especially because the author, John Yeo Mui Yan, it's hard to say it, but he's a PhD biochemist, and he reviews the biochemistry of F- in more detail, explains how it damages collagen by substituting out for hydrogens, explains how by damaging proteins, it increases the risk of autoimmune disease. It also accelerates aging, maybe because you have ligament breakdown in the spine and other locations. Um, it causes increased cancer risk. Uh, he actually published the research on that, and he got in a lot of trouble for that. He lost his job because he published the fact that it had caused like a 10 or a 15% increase in cancer. And he got fired because of that. That was a big deal. He lost an editorial job. They don't want the public knowing the truth about this stuff. Okay, the next book is a book that I'm not even 100% done with it. I just started reading it right recently. This guy named Raja Reddy, he is a doctor in India. He works only in India uh, he, that I'm aware of. He's a neurosurgeon. So he does surgery on patients' spines. And the reason why is this an interesting book. When I first started this book, it's all about endemic areas of fluorosis in India. There are some areas in India where they have very high concentration of fluoride in the water, and all the people in the local villages get sick, almost all of them. And it messes up their spines. That's, it's called skeletal fluorosis. You could call it spinal fluorosis. And him being a, a spine surgeon, he has to operate on these patients. That's partly how he became interested in it. So like I'm saying, when I first started reading this book, I thought the book was a little bit stupid. The pictures are lousy. And by the way, the best people for handling pictures are radiologists. They know how to show a beautiful picture, how to point out the key findings, how to pick the image which captures the essence of it, okay? Versus internal medicine doctors and neurosurgeons and most other doctors, they suck at looking at pictures and they don't know how to present them in a good way. Okay, the key concept of presenting a good picture of a radiology image is you need to know that the best image is the one that shows the most of the anatomical region on a sing single picture, and that explains it most clearly. Anyways, so at first I was reading this book, I wasn't even sure if I was going to finish it. You know, the print is microscopic, the illustrations are not well done, um, the, the language is awkward. I think it was transferred, translated from another language into English. But the more I read it, the better the book got. And the reason is, you know, I deal with the spine all the time. I used to run a spinal injection clinic. And this guy knows a lot about the spine. And he starts going through all the details, the things that I actually care about. Why does F- minus cause degeneration of the spine? It, incre it damages the collagen, just like Yomiyama talked about. It then causes 
a pattern of disease where the ligaments are weak that is very cause, going to cause segmental instability. So it's going to cause DISH, diffuse idiopathic scuttle hyperostosis, also called fluoresces disease, which is bridging osteophytes between all the vertebrae of the spine. They got all these bone spurs growing between them that connect them and fuse them all together. So the spine becomes totally stiff, like one big bone instead of a bunch of separate vertebrae. They get ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament, which usually begins as calcification of the posterior surface of the disc where it contacts the central spinal canal. They get OLF, OLF, ossification of ligamentum flavin, the ligament in the back of the, the spinal column. It's also called the yellow ligament, you know, like flavum means uh, yellow. Okay, so anyways, it's good, all right? Then he talks about who gets it worse. If the patient is deficient in magnesium and vitamin C, they get worse uh, fluorosis. And you'll, gee, who's deficient in magnesium and vitamin C? People who don't eat enough plants, all right? Then he also says if they ingest AL, and we know AL is put into our tap water, they get worse fluorosis. If they're exposed to strontium, they get worse fluorosis, okay? That's a big deal. We'll come back to that in a future time. Uh, T has a tendency to concentrate fluoride, so he says it's a bad idea. People drink a lot of tea will have worse fluorosis, worse side effects of fluoride. And that could be a big deal. That could mean worse brain damage, lower IQ. It's another reason why I don't think tea is a good idea. Okay, guess what? Soy beverages have a tendency to concentrate F-. minus. I didn't see this in his book, but here's just an example of one of the papers on the subject. F- minus exposure from soybean beverage, a toxic risk assessment, um, the f concentration of F- minus in soy beverages was analyzed, in 30 samples of popular brands, then they go through the surprisingly high levels in multiple brands, he says, and the conclusion of the article is the consumption of soy beverages contributes significantly. Contributes significantly. That's a strong word in, in, in research papers. To the daily intake of F-, minus, which could exceed the ADI, you know, the acceptable daily intake. Okay, so it's bad. That's why I would never drink any soy beverage. That's why I say soy is for chumps. Okay, he also says high-fat diets increase the gut absorption of F-. Do you get it? Do you see what I'm trying to say here? Everything from a Western high-meat, high-oil diet messes you up with F- as well as many other things. So the high-fat Westerner diet will increase absorption of F-. It's deficient in magnesium and vitamin C, so that worsens the toxicology of F-. T worsens F- toxicology. Tap water AL worsens F- toxicology. Guess what? Acidic blood and acidic urine will also worsen F- toxicology. Well, guess what? What causes acidic blood and urine? Sodium chloride does, which is salt, because the chloride displaces bicarbonate from the blood, causing a low-grade uh, metabolic acidosis worsens F- toxicity. Why do animal proteins do it? Because they got more uh, sulfur-containing amino acids like cysteine and methionine, which part of their degradation and metabolism is to make sulfuric acid, causing a low-grade metabolic acidosis, meaning that they're going to worsen F- toxicity. Okay, all these patients over time get atherosclerosis, hypertension, diabetes, so they have progressively worsening kidney function. Guess what else worsens F- toxicity uh, when you've got kidney failure? Because you're less able to excrete F- from your body and lower your F- level. And of course, the more F- you're exposed to, the higher the concentration in the water, the more you ingest because of tea, soy beverages, etc., the worse the toxicology of it. So, quite interesting. So, there's a piece of advice. You want to avoid this F- stuff. It's a major toxin. Anyways, I hope that was interesting. That concludes books numbers 31 through 35 of the top 50 books of all time.